Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. Today, I have a very special guest with me today. She is the founder of Vanity Project. She's an art curator as well. Please welcome Miss Rita Pinto. Hello, Rita. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Asia. I'm so excited to be here. That's great. That's awesome. So I wanted to kind of start off with your upbringing. What was your upbringing like and how did you get into the beauty and art industry? Well, I really didn't intend to get up in the, in the beauty and art, in, I mean, in the beauty industry, that's for sure. But um, I started off um, studying art history and I went to um, boarding school in England and uh, my mother, I'm originally from San Francisco, back up. I'm originally from San Francisco. My mother is from Brazil and I have a very unique upbringing in that she sent us to boarding school in England, my sister and I, when we were nine and seven. Um, so I really was raised in the UK for many years and then um, came back to the United States for college. Um, so I went to art school when I was about 15. The, in England, you do high school like separate. So you do like, mm -hmm. let's say your uh, freshman, sophomore year, and then you can kind of skip out on school. If you want to go to college, you then take your junior and senior year and it's called like the GCSE. So I stayed in England. I did my GCSE, but I specialized in art history. So this program was amazing. We would travel all over the world looking at art. And so essentially that's like the bedrock of my kind of relationship with art and also the way I kind of like live it, breathe it, see it type of thing. So um, uh, essentially I have an art history degree. Um, I went and got a master's in art business from Sotheby's Institute in London as well. So I went back for my master's in the UK and then I worked in New York. Um, I moved to New York after that and I worked there for about five years in marketing and advertising in the art world and um and then i worked at a company called future brand um so i have an extensive um, background in like branding and in business and in sort of business um kind of yeah like you know, an MBA, but in art, basically. Um, so the segue into the beauty happened in around 2008 when I realized like I had been curating exhibitions all over the world and traveling tons, but real no traction in my hometown, which for me was New York. And I felt like, what could I do that really was exemplar of my passion, but also make money, right? And we have to be realistic, like, Mm -hmm. what I was doing was fun, but it wasn't really making money. Um, it wasn't making business sense. And so that's when I started thinking about, well, what could I do? And I, you know, when you've been studying art or his, you know, art history for, you know, 15 years, you're like, well, this is what I'm trained to do. And this is what I, I this is what I want. Right. But then I think things like a pandemic or like uh, like Lehman falling and the sort of subsequent crash makes you kind of re-examine your path. And um, that's essentially what I did. And I started meeting artists like Naomi Asuda and Flurry Rose and um, the Illustrated Nail in London because my practice was to meet artists, go to their studios and see their work. And so I quickly sort of pivoted to nail artists and treating nail artists the same way I treated artists, but instead of going to the studio visit, I went and got a manicure. And mm -hmm. so that's how I built these critical early relationships with some of the top girls um, that were doing nails at that level. And um, then I started doing pop-ups and, you know, we'll, we'll go on to that. But, um, but the, the, the nuts and bolts of it is like the, that was, you know, the sort of pivot, you know, um, that, that made beauty become like something of interest. And then like the nail art and the video art. Um, so I was trying to think like, what could you do? But like, what could it, why does it make sense to me? Like, right. you know, I don't 
to just open a salon like that seems like too much of 180 like what could I do that still kind of like felt like me you know and video art is a medium that is very difficult to sell um it's a it's a it's a medium that um, it's easy to ask. So I could ask galleries to work with really great artists and still keep like profile, you know, um, right. and still, and still do really cool things, but just, it, you know, at the same time, art fairs were happening and whatever. So it was harder to work or more competitive to find the great work or what have you. So it was actually a really easy segue into beauty, but I didn't know anything about beauty when I first got into this. And it was a real challenge for me. I went to nail school, mm -hmm. so you've got to do the homework. So I went to nail school. I graduated Christine Valmy. Um, I got my license. I, you know, I was like, well, if I'm really going to do this, I got to go whole hog, you know? Right. Um, so that's, so that's in a nutshell, like how I entered into the beauty business. Oh, that's a really good story. And it's so interesting how you went to like nail school, you know, to learn like the ins and outs of like the nail industry. Like for me, I went to uh, like during high school um, here in America, I'm from the BC area. And so I took cosmetology courses in high school. And then before I went to college, I went to Savannah College of Art and Design, which is one, oh, of, how cool. um, one of the top art schools um, yeah, in America. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, absolutely. SCAD is the best. I mean, absolutely. I've actually been dying to do pop-ups at SCAD. It's a, really one of the best schools in the country. Well done. That's so impressive. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's so cool to learn so much about art, you know, especially me being in SCAD. You know, I did illustration. Um, with yeah. So fibers is like yarn work and... Oh, and it's so influential, right? And I mean, yeah. even with the nails, how it's, it's so cool now in hindsight, how I look back to the sort of influences and how they like sort of resonate to your journey, right? And so right. I'm sure it means something to you still, like, you know, the inspirations or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I always recommend when the, we, when we have our artists come from all over the world, I, I, I have them go to, like, I tell them, let go to the Cooper Hewitt museum, go see the textiles, go see, like, because for me, that's like nail art that speaks to nail art, like right. all of those details that patterns or whatever, you know, yeah. um, really speak to what we do. Um, whether that's graphically or um, a color palette or, you know, some new kind of technique that you kind of, you know, riffed on or whatever, you know? Yeah, I can definitely agree. Now, your mom was an art collector. So was she the driving force as to how you got into art? Um, she would definitely like my first exposure to it. I mean, you know, I grew up, all her friends were artists. And so we would like go, um, you know, and I would, uh, some of her friends were sort of, uh, didn't have kids and they would sort of is, is take me into the studio and I would, I grew up sort of like in their studios, hanging out with them. And, you know, I really was like in love with being with artists mainly, you know, mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of a sort of a very early influence. Of course, like having art in the home is really influential. Um, but really the school that I was at in the UK was where the sort of real passion kicked mm -hmm. in for me in a, in a sense that it was like, I knew there was nothing else I wanted to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and so I, I realized that you don't necessarily in life always have to do what you studied. You, you mm -hmm. can just be passionate about, be, about things too. You know, like now, for example, I'm buying art. So it's, it's like, well, listen, if you just work your work hard enough, you know, then you can, then you can, you know, enjoy it in a different way, you know, with the same passion. Right. Right. Now, in terms of you buying art, like what is like some of the artists, you know, work that you would collect? So, so it runs a gamut. So I love music and I love um, live music and I traveled with bands. I have a very like high, low history. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, boarding school in England, but went on fish tour. Um, mm -hmm. So like I've traveled the country going across the country on with like a rock and roll band basically um so 
So for me, like I like a lot of artists that use music in their practice or like um, sound art um, and things like that. So, um, but then I also really love Brazilian contemporary art. So I'm connecting back to like my mother's history. And, you know, I studied a lot of Latin American art when I was in school. So a lot of the art that I uh, collect is sort of Brazilian contemporary or American contemporary. So artists that I have met in the last 20 years in New York um, who, you know, and, and these things are like maybe, you know, $2,000 and you pay in installments or $5,000 and you pay in installments or, you know, it's not that I ever approach this with a budget. Um, I just approached it with like a real passion. So whether it was an artist that I was working with and we did a trade or whether it was, I don't know, like, I mean, literally, you know, helping them move or something, letting them use my car. I mean, just like mm -hmm. scrappy, you know, but in hindsight, I look back and I mean, my part, my home now, we, we finally bought a house um, mm -hmm. is like filled with like these little things, you know, I mean, even mm -hmm. like signed, um, signed like uh like signatures from like a musician that I met along the way you know we had like framed and stuff and things like that like really you know posters from like the day that my husband and I got together you know like things like that it's like you know you layer with like personal and like real art too obviously you know yeah I truly truly agree you know, like, yeah, I think like you like you appreciate it more. You know, you walk in, you're like, yeah. yeah. I think as, especially when you're getting a little older, everything's like kind of like a memory or a hindsight, mm -hmm. or you know, like your old friend that you no longer see or unfortunately passed away, or like a lot more of that happens inevitably, and so mm -hmm. it's like memories and things that you hold dear. It's really special. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I remember a time, like in my early teens, my parents would take me and my brother um, to these art galleries and we would see like these cool works of art like from Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo. And it's so really cool to see like these different, different intricate uh, works of art, you know, especially from the Renaissance. And especially with me going to uh, art school like SCAD, you know, it's, it's really cool to see different styles of art, you know, um, Jacob Lawrence, um, you know, I got I got inspired by other artists like Jean Michel Bosque, Keith Haring, yeah, you know, Andy Warhol. Um, Absolutely, and I mean, you see those influences in nail art so much, and like my artists all champion that kind of influence as well, and I love that. And you know, you 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 hit the nail on the head and when I was writing the notes for our call today like I was thinking the same thing like I don't have a favorite artist like mm -hmm. I tell you renaissance to present day there's like a hit in each you know it's like kind of saying well who's your favorite song you're like mm -hmm. well gosh what mood am I in you know what I mean like so you know sometimes it's like mosaics because you're thinking mosaics for some reason, you know what I mean? Or or like Basquiat, you said, you know, like we're doing a project coming up and I was doing some research and like a lot of the photos have like Basquiat and Andy Warhol and whatever. And we're just like, you know, everything comes back to like an era or a moment. And mm -hmm. of course, for me, it's always like a nail moment, right? So it's like a sickness now. So, you know, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, okay, Andy Warhol, okay, who was there? Oh, well, Cher was there and she had good nails. Let's look at Cher's nails. Or like, so the reference, but the same kind of method of the madness is there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm so glad that your experiences mirror mine with the uh, art because I think you understand how like in sync it is with um, mm -hmm. nails and of course self-expression and like what people do with nails and you know the possibilities with nails when you have those kinds of influences or can render those influences you know or use those influences and reinterpret them which I'm so excited because your references like when I was looking at some of yours, you could see that like Jacob Lawrence for sure. You could see a lot of like some like more even, you know, um, stencil work or mm -hmm. um, a lot of that. And, and I love that 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 is um, sort of part of your sort of um, practice or process, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I like to have like my stuff is like abstract, 
but I like to add like inanimate objects, you know, and I like to have, you know, different objects of personality and things of that nature. You know, even with the modern artists like Kirby Rosanes, Alex Conahan, these are like illustrators who really inspire me. And it's really, really cool to see like different styles, you know, especially Kirby Rosanes. His work is phenomenal. Really, I don't know. You have to you have to share that with me. I don't know all of them, all, but it sounds familiar because I've heard people talking about a Kirby. And so I just mm -hmm. don't have a, a, a picture in my mind of the work, but I love learning every day. I always say like every day is a school day, you know, because it's true. Like, um, and I love like always getting turned on to new um, artists and new nail artists, new everything, you know, because mm -hmm. like even like, when we're doing like the interiors for the house, you know, I, all of a sudden I'm like down the rabbit hole. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know I cared so much about doorknobs, but <laughs> it's a detail, you know? <laughs> and then people come in, they're like, damn, I love your doorknobs. I'm like, see, <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. I, you know, that's why they're like 200 bucks, you know? Yeah. I'm just kidding. But you know, it's true. You have like a different relationship to this when you're, you know, I mean, it took me 25 years to buy this house. So I like really appreciative of like what we were able to work towards, you know, mm -hmm. because in New York, you never think that you're ever going to buy a house or any kind of like, you know, you're like living on tacos your whole life. And then you become like, like this kind of broke mentality, you know, where you think right. like you don't deserve more than tacos. Um, yeah. Yes. So it's a process, but I'm living in abundance now and I'm really happy. It's been nearly 10 years with Vanity Projects. Oh, wow. It's been a decade. That's, that's incredible. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I mean, it's been hard fought, but we've learned, you know, I've grown like, you know, immensely like mm -hmm. you you know it's funny to look back at the sort of origin story and to go back through like your questions and and think about the journey it's like it's it's so far from where we started you know what I mean like and yet it's like yesterday you know mm -hmm. um so much in that growth process though and still growing you know mm -hmm. um but I'm so happy that it's 10 years now because um it was long and hard it was not easy but I mean especially now after COVID but you know it you're kind of like okay you made <laughs> yeah right like it's not like a woo you know you're like yeah. shit I'm out of breath you know <laughs> like that's how I feel a little bit you know I'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. but yeah. I I feel excited now so I, I'm 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 filled with hope for what we're what we've completely you know we 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 work we're working hard like um you know from going to nail school to now it's like full circle, you know, because right. now we've launched Vanity Projects Institute. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have my own nail school. Um, and so, mm -hmm. and, and we're hearkening back to all the things that kind of resonated with me when I was in nail school and what was important for me as a student and the takeaways and how to really give the student what you need, not versus like what like really set you up for success not some like bait and switch you know and I'm right. very real that's like one thing you know that I've that stood the test of time but um you know I I'm really wanting results and I'm really wanting our students to like really get to that next level you know one mm -hmm. thing that's happened in the last 10 years is that we've really professionalized what we do mm -hmm. and we've created these amazing systems in the salon that maximize our pricing our our time mm -hmm. all of the little nuances that you sort of learn over time you know we've really kind of sort of worked out the kinks and now the artists are like i mean my artists make 100 grand a year Wow, that's like, amazing. Like, like, and that's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's not, you know, that's minimum, you know? Um, so that's not even like on a good day, like that's what they make. And it's, and it, and it didn't come easy, but it came with, like I said, this kind of professionalization of what we do. And so that's really why the school in my, in my opinion is like, 
learn from us because we want you to be as successful, you know, like I don't want nail artists to be making $30,000 a year in Ohio or wherever. I don't care. Even in, in New York, you know, like, but these skills that we're teaching in the school will really get you to where you need to be financially to make this like a career path, you know, um, that's like my ultimate goal right now. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the Vandy Projects Nail Institute, what are the classes that you would offer in terms of beginner and intermediate? Okay, so, so we've created two different programs, uh, beginners and intermediate, just like you said, right? And you don't need a license, you don't need anything to do the beginners course. You can just be interested in nails, either as a hobbyist or have just gone to school or be in school. It only takes seven days completely to 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 to, uh, to finish. So mm -hmm. it's a hybrid of both online pre-recorded classes that are beautifully shot in like a movie style quality. So what we did is we partnered with some of the best videographers I've met in like a very long time to like produce. Like I said, like I mean it's. It, it, when I tell you the production went into this, it's like a massive production that went into this because what I felt was missing in the marketplace was that level of production. You know, I don't want to learn from a YouTube tutorial necessarily. Like I wanted to add the production quality that was missing in what I was seeing in the marketplace. So mm -hmm. what we really did was spend a lot of money on the production quality. So what you're getting is mm -hmm. like gorgeous, beautiful images of the nails coming into fruition so you can see crystal clear like what the girl is doing so because I was very this was all supposed to be in person like I've been working on this for the last four or five years I always knew that education was like the only way that I could expand the brand so I have a we have a salon in New York we have the salon in Miami but mm -hmm. my number one question is the artists the talent those are not something that grows on trees as you know and so like I couldn't open Van projects in all the towns that were inviting me I've been like so blessed to get invitations to open in LA and Dallas and Houston and this mall and that mall in DC and I'm always like I'm really so thankful for the opportunity thank you so much but unfortunately I don't have the talent I don't have the artists and so the school was was like the solution for that problem. I went to Japan, I, I did my homework, I met all of my vendors and they were all like, the, the, the education is like the deal, is the next like entry point, right? Is the, you know, is the hurdle for us all basically. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And it just turns out one of my top girls that I had worked with in um, New York, uh, who went back to Japan, who I met while I was there was, she's, she's an also, uh, a JNA certified instructor. So that's the Japanese Nail Association, which is literally like the gold standard for nail education. And she was already, you know, she had already received her license. So mm -hmm. in Japan, um, you know, there's a very formal route, just like in the US, you know, like there's people that go to nail school and get their license. And then there's like the hobbyist that's also amazing nail artist that never went and got her license, right? So mm -hmm. the trend in Japan was that more so was the, the the latter the really good at doing nails but never went to school because the precision in Japan is so intense right so like a week doing just filing shaping you know like really militant but look what the results are right and the yeah. testing and everything you know and so it's really brutal but I love that because I'm serious. I'm not joking around about doing a school. I'm not like joking about like this being like a little, like I said, like a YouTube tutorial. Like I really want you to learn so that like you can work in my salon, you know, like this is, this is like a training, but like a real school training. So for, so, so the setup is, um, okay. So sorry, rewind back. The point was, is that I wanted to do it in person. Mm -hmm. This time last year, I had a lease in hand at a gorgeous location in Tribeca. And I was like, it's going to be in person. And it's going to be gorgeous in this beautiful school. It's like old, like tin ceilings. And I was mm -hmm. super pumped. And then COVID happened. And I was like, 
I had been working on this, like I said, for many years. I had gotten an O-1 visa for this artist from Japan to come in the Trump era, which was the most profoundly difficult process, you know, for so many reasons, as you might imagine. Um, and I got the visa. And, you know, the girl is here, like she's ready to go. Like, and I'm also very true to my word. So if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be like, oh, sorry, COVID, you know, change of plans. You're going to be a nail artist now. <clears throat> no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I said, I'm going to open a school and we're going to figure out a way. So, you know, obviously masterclass is a beautiful concept and they do a great job of let's say like the production quality right but I was very interested in it because I was like but do people really use it like what do you learn and then my friend is in um she's in uh interior design school but she lives in Toronto and I said how are you in interior design school in, in New York um, you know, one of the best interior design schools in New York, but living in Toronto, she's like, I do it all online. And I was like, okay, give me your username and password. I want to see what you see. I want to see like the back end, right? And I saw what she was doing in the back end. And I was like, yo, this is legit school. Like, this is no joke. She had homework. She could talk to the teachers. She could, you know, like all the infrastructure was there, right? So the company, um, I reached out to the company and I've partnered with the company um, so that now we are also using that same platform um, mm -hmm. so we've done the production quality of like a, let's say like a movie quality um, with this um, in structure backbone so that our offering is five days of video so like you have a, a video you have the in structure, so you log in, you see the videos through the thing. You also have a workbook um, that like parlays to what you're learning. And then you have like this, the, the outreach to the teacher and so that you can like uh, send them messages and questions, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last two days you have an online Zoom with the teacher. And that is what I never thought we could have happen, but it took a pandemic to make that a reality, right? Yeah. So before it would have been like, no way you can't teach nails like on a computer, like that, no. But now like there's no hesitancy to like an online methodology. So I'm 100% confident that with the quality of the production, with the one-on-one um, -on -one with the teacher on Zoom, that actually you're gonna feel more comfortable because you're in your environment, you're at home, you've got all of your creativity and all your creative surroundings. Um, you know, you're mm -hmm. not in a classroom like with other people you don't know. I mean, trust me, nail school was nightmare because 80% of the people around me were like, you know, one girl didn't know what a money order was. I was like, where are you from? Like, girl, like, okay. You know, <laughs> like, uh, I guess I'm in nail school. <laughs> like, you know, it was like brutal for your self-esteem. You're just like, shit, why am I here? You know, um, but the good news is, um, that you escape any of that BS, you know, it's not like, oh, I hate that girl. She gives vibe, you know, none of that. Like you're just like it's you and the girl and it's all about you and your like progress and your work. And I love that aspect about it. Right. So mm -hmm. the beginners is it teaches you proper nail preparation, which is like the sort of bedrock for your chips and fixes and problems with lifting and all of that with your clients. So we teach you the proper way so that it's like bulletproof so that you're not having the client come back. Like we want to save you time and money and like it doesn't it, the, the time the client comes back for a fix is the time that you could be seeing another client and making more money. So like got to do it right the first time. Right. Um, and then obviously like ill will and, you know, tired, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's just get you to a better place with your foundation. So it's a, it's a fabulous foundation, the drill skills, which is monumental in terms of saving time and, um, 
learning how to use a drill to do cuticle work and to do prep, which is also saves you time with the client. You know, we want you to see five or six clients a day. We don't want you to see three clients a day, right? So mm-hmm. that really helps with your speed and your prep, like I said. Um, and then we teach you like shaping, which is hugely important um, because you can do a beautiful nail art manicure, but the shape of the nails is what will bring the client back um, specifically to you like I always hear my clients say she knows my shape she knows my shape you know and I'm like yeah like you're dedicated to the shape to the feel to the touch right and so I'm sorry I get really into it um but it's but shaping is everything right so right, right. Anyway, so shaping is is monumental and then and then four really cool nail art designs and it's $380. Okay. Mm. So, so it's deep, deep and it's thorough, but it's also reasonable. And that was also hugely important to me. I wasn't trying to sell $2,000 nail school because I know that nail artists can't afford three $2,000 nail school, but how could you not afford $380? $380 is something that you're like, honey, I mean, I'm paying that in chips and fixes alone. You know what I mean? So just do it for that. Anyone can do it just to learn, like to improve yourself. And, you know, I, I, talk to nail techs all over the world who don't know how to use a drill still who do everything by hand. And I'm like, girl you know this you're not doing for your health this is what you're doing for your living you know this isn't a hobby this is like how to make money you're not spending an hour sitting there taking off hard gel or whatever you know like this is like to how like I said to professionalize what we do um anyway so that's the beginner's class um and then the intermediary class, we ask that the, that the students send a portfolio or Instagram handle so that we know that you're not going to be in over your head. I don't want to sell a class that you're not going to be able to learn from or that you're just not there yet, you know, because there's no point. Like, you're not going to get what you need, you know. And like I said, I, we're really trying to get the students to, like, level up to like really like double their income. And I'm not saying it as a marketing tool. I'm saying it's like legitimately like Mm -hmm. these skills and these nail art uh, designs that we're teaching, you know, some of them, I I said to myself, like, why is she teaching this like geometric look? Like of all the things, like it's kind of like, you know, I wouldn't have chosen that design. All right, like I, I, but I, but she's sensei, right? So she knows what she's doing. And, and so then I thought about it and I asked her, I was like, why did you choose that design? It's so random, you know? And she's like, yes, because this design will teach you how to do 30 other designs. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. You know, and so back to that, you know? And so that's the point is that it's like, can I, Yagi is the most talented, one of the most talented women I've ever worked with. And so to to be able to have this opportunity where she's showing you her secrets and her way of doing things is outstanding. You know, it's like such a unique opportunity. So that's really why I'm passionate about what we've done um and the and the and the and and the intermediary class. So once you once you've sent us your portfolio we're not like looking to see that you're a master at it, but we're just looking to see like, if you can, if you can, if you can keep up. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so do you have the basics like line work, or whatever, you know, because she's going to teach you how to make like tiny little birds on like, you know, the nail or, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to, you, you, but Anyway, so, or a butterfly or whatever, you know, so, um, so, you, so the, the, the course is the same. It's five days and then two days with the teacher and the, the one on, and it's the one on one with the teacher um, mm-hmm. for the intermediates. Um, and that also comes with a workbook and the same kind of in structure so that you have the back end and all of that. And then that's what we've done to launch the school. And mm-hmm. our feeling is that we're going to grow on these and we're going to then expand to guest artists, 
doing it. Um, we're going to add like different nail, um, like trends or, you know, designs or whatever, you know? So this is just, like I said, like the, the beginning, um, to what we think will then be, um, you know, the world is your oyster basically. Mm -hmm. Mm, that that's awesome. That's really great. Um, I also want to ask. Oh, and I'm sorry, that's only five hundred dollars. So, and that includes yeah. another four designs too. So that that's the point. They're like priced for that reason. Like, I really mm -hmm. want people just to do it. Not necessarily. It's not about me making money. It's about me getting to the point where you know, like I said, I could open locations all over the country and find nail artists easily. You know. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So in terms of finding like nail artists for vanity projects, like what, what qualities do you look for in a nail artist? So I always look for an artist that has a unique voice. I always look for an artist that has a unique thumb. You know what I mean? Like something special, something, whether it's their line work, whether it's their gem work, whether it's the characters, you know, something like, you know, for example, we work with Spifster in the past. We've worked mm -hmm. with um, Charmed by Sarah. We've worked with so many artists that have such a very unique perspective. And I love that first and foremost. Um, but beyond that, um, for the salons, I mean, we've created an extremely high technical standard. So, you know, of course, when they see something on the Instagram, like, it's like, I want that, you know? And so it's hard for us to be able to give the Vanity Projects quality product without somebody who can really execute at that level. And so um, I'll, uh, so that's really what I'm looking for. When, I, when I'm looking at like, let's say like a beginner's Instagram or a beginner's artist Instagram, because it's not like we don't give chances because I know that I make talent. So for example, a lot of the artists that, come, that have come to work for me started maybe at a beginner level okay, they could do the basics and then have grown exponentially in like the process of whatever, two or three years at the salon, they've become one of the top girls because practice makes perfect. And I'm a huge believer of that. I've seen it. And it, for example, in Miami last year, we did a bit of a hiring um, and a bit of a sort of um, like a, uh, training or more like artists who brought other other artists under their wing and they were kind of like their we don't do it often but um we were, it, we were really looking to grow in Miami and so I I said to the girls well listen if you could help me kind of sort of foster somebody like I'm open to it you know mm -hmm. um so we did that and after COVID these were the women who I have seen just completely sore and it's because they were they, they they were trained properly they had the basics and so you know if I see that I know okay we can work with that we can work with that I can turn you into a superstar because I know that my team and being in our environment is what makes people better you know they're learning they're 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 doing it every day you know so those same girls that last year were beginners are now like killing it killing it in the salon and I'm so excited and motivated by that because that makes me think like this this school thing can really work because mm -hmm. it 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 proof is in the pudding right so that's that's really what's so exciting about this opportunity is that I love like I recognize that in the 10 years that we have had vanity projects or that we've been doing this project mm -hmm. that I've seen so many artists come through the salon and what is like the common denominator right like what are the 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 the, the, the is it the art which is always front and center um but it's the talent and you know the talent and the quality of the products that we use obviously but the talent has always been like you know a hundred percent um and so that for me is what is like my passion my interest my everything my inspiration you know um 
to find talent, to nurture talent, to expose talent, to say like, okay, well maybe this artist doesn't know, you know, but Hey, you know what you do? Like I do, you know, or my team does. And so let's just, let's just, she's cool. Let's just take the, you know, like, let's right. go make her one of ours. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just give her this gift, you know, because it is a gift. And I feel wholeheartedly like, um, you know, like, you know, nails is something that you wear it's so personal, you know, it's, it's right. like, they always say that nails, um, will survive any kind of economic downfall because it's like the one thing that a woman sort of needs like they need lipstick but as after after not wearing a you know when you're wearing a mask for a year and there's like lipstick sales have gone gone really bad you know but but the nails like you could be 300 pounds or 100 pounds. Like you could be, you know, tall, you could be ugly, you could be this, you could be that. And your nails, like you could have any low self-esteem or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? But your nails on point always makes you feel good, makes you feel together, makes you feel pretty. Like I always tell the people, you could be in sweatpants and your nails look good and you, you know, but this was before COVID. So now sweatpants is a thing. It's like, <laughs> honey, take the sweatpants off. You know, <laughs> let's just keep, like, even with the nails, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless of that, you know, and I, I joke a lot, but um, but I really feel that nails is emotional. And, um, and so that's why I'm 100% like invested in this. And I feel like it's not a trend. It's like for good, you know, mm-hmm. because of how it makes you feel, you know. Um, right. You know, whether it's like Justin Bieber on your nails or DMX or whatever your right. info is like you and I were like geeking out about our art inspo and like how right, we can exactly. do like nails about our geeked out art history tracks, you know, mm-hmm. like I see the same people coming in and doing that with all of their passions and all of their things that they're like hype about. And that gives me such life, you know, I, I, I right. really love seeing that. And, and it's not... And it's not just like passive, it's, it's really heartfelt, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I, I believe in it, you know? Mm-hmm.